Praise God. It's a beautiful Sunday here with our body. Uh, we just want to just be a blessing today, and uh, I have one of uh, my best friends in the Lord, Jonathan Spurlock, also a director here for Living Water Ministries, FLF, and uh, I just had the Spirit of the Lord come over me this week and said that Brother Jonathan has a word that he needs to give to our body and to those that view him. And so I'm deferring the pulpit today to Brother Jonathan. He's got some fresh bread that's coming right off the griddle for us. But uh, before we begin, I just want to give it over to the Lord. Father God, thank you for our many blessings, Lord. Thank you for seeing us through another week. Thank you for allowing us to be vessels for your gospel in all things and to practice first fruits as we learned last week and what that means, spending time with you. Because you redeem the time, Father God. You justify and qualify us. And you just continue to love on us with a agape love that's immeasurable because of our inheritance in you. So thank you, Father. We, we choose to receive and achieve in nothing. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Jonathan. the opportunity to come. I just want to share some things that's been on my heart, and I just hope that they're a blessing to you. Uh, I'm going to be talking out of Luke 15, and I'm going to start in verse 11. And if this is something that, um, this is something I believe that touches everybody's life at some point or another. And I believe that we all would benefit young, old, and in between, uh, of how to handle these situations in our lives. And so uh, this is a familiar uh, a place people go to. It's uh, Luke 15, it's about the prodigal son. But I just kind of want to share some things that God has showed me in a time of need to be able to deal with some things uh, concerning, concerning people you love, concerning people that uh, you care for. And so in verse 11 of uh, Luke chapter 15, it says, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me thy portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And so we see that a man had two sons. And we see that one son, the youngest son, we see it a lot. We see kids want to grow up too quick. We see people want to get we see people want to get out there on their own too quick. Yeah. You see young people get married uh, and they'll want everything that mama and daddy had too quick. You see people that you, you try to talk to them and then at a certain point, at a certain age in their life, it's like they stop hearing you. They stop receiving that and they're not going to hear you no more. They want the opportunity and they want the ability to be able to go their own way. It's just something that we, if you haven't seen it by now, you will see it because people, people want, for whatever reason, and I've noticed that it has nothing to do with upbringing. It doesn't have to do anything with upbringing. I was brought up in a Christian home. I was brought up with good parents. And still, for a five-year period of my life, from 16 to 21, I wanted to go my own way. I wanted to find out for myself. I wanted my portion. I wanted what I wanted for my life. And so you see where he says that in 13, he wanted his, I mean in 12, you see where he wanted his portion. And he wanted something that he wasn't yet supposed to have. That's right. Because you want, you want something too quick. And it's better to it's better to leave a situation with a blessing than to leave in rebellion. And he wanted an inheritance. He wanted his part of an inheritance from a father who has not yet passed away. And so right off the bat, we understand that people don't always want to go about things God's way. People don't always respect and value the laws or the principles of God. And so we just see in 13, it says, and not many days after that the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance on righteous living. So the son gets what he wants. Surprisingly, the father gets him what he wants. That's right. And I think that there's a lesson in that. 
I do believe that it is our responsibility to speak truth. I do believe that it is our responsibility to try to educate, and it is our responsibility to try to lead people in the in the direction of the things of God. But I do believe there comes a time when you have to say, "I'm going to let you go ahead and do what it is that you want to do." I'm going. I'm going to. What it is that you're wanting, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to let you have it. And he says that uh, he took his journey into a far country. What you need to understand is, is what I'm fixing to start talking to you about now is, is I'm fixing to lay down the foundation of how you can find peace in a situation when people are going the way that you know they shouldn't go. But there's people that are out there that are deceived and that they do not understand even of themselves what they're doing. Yeah. And so you cannot continue to wrestle with people who do not understand the wrong that they're doing. Yeah, tell the truth. Okay, you, you have to be able to protect and to guard your heart from the things that would keep you from having a hard heart, from you to have the bitterness, from you to have the problems. So notice this, the boy gets what he wants, the father gives it to him. So it is my, my understanding that when you run across somebody that wants to go their own way, let them go. Here's what they do. Here's the next thing they do. He says right here in 13, he says, and he took his journey into a far country. You'll know that, that, that they're in rebellion and you'll know that this is what needs to take place when they want to get as far away from you as possible. Amen. When they want to leave, they want to go into the country that's far away from you. The reason why is, the reason why they want to get away from you is because of exactly what your presence brings to their attention. Mm. It's exactly the, con they cannot continue to be in the same atmosphere as you because the very presence of you continues to bring up the sin or the problem in their life. Wow. And they want to continue to seek that out. They want to continue to give in to that. They want to go experience that. I can remember as myself, I drank my first beer when I was 16 years old. And not only did I drink my first beer when I was 16 years old, but I drank and drove for my first drink. You know what I mean? Like the very first time I ever drank alcohol, I drank alcohol and drove at the same time. And so I can remember all that time of my parents telling me about alcohol. I can remember my parents talking to me about how that it never benefits anybody's life, that so on and so forth. But I wanted to find out for myself because I thought that they were trying to keep me from something. And they couldn't convince me different because for some reason it got twisted in my head that my parents weren't good. They had never shown me different but somehow or another, I, I believe the lie that they were trying to keep me from some good thing. So I had to get as far away from as possible. So when I was 16 years old, what did I do? I left home. I left home. Why did I leave home? Because I knew one thing couldn't happen at home. I would not be able to continue to live how I wanted to live and stay at home. Come on. Because it was not acceptable. Yeah. So when you have people in your life that want to go against against what you stand for and how you believe and they choose and they want to go a different direction and they want to get as far away from you as possible from that moment is when we start wrestling with people mm. that's when we get into the problem yeah listen that is the biggest comfort that you ever need to know when there's somebody that wants to get as far away from you as possible and wants to say hurtful things to you and wants to try to get after you and wants to tell you all this i can remember talking to my mom like I mean I'm ashamed of how I did it. But the reason why is, is I wanted to put enough space in between me and them so I didn't have any kind of conscience of what I was doing. Yeah. Because I tried to remove those thoughts as far away from my mind as possible. And so for for on the opposite side, what you need to understand is is you need to understand that when you see somebody trying to remove themselves from you, that's when you need to stop. You need to let them go. And you need to take great comfort in the fact of how they're leaving. And we'll continue to figure out why. It says that he journeyed into a far country and there wasted his substance 
with riotous living. So he got away, this son got away from the father. Got his inheritance that he shouldn't have had. His father didn't keep him from doing it. He'd give it to him. Then he got as far away from his father and his family as he possibly could. And then he went to pursuing the very thing that he thought he wanted. He wasted everything that he inherited. So he wasted his entire inheritance within a short period of time on righteous living, which is just all kind of wrong living. Anything and everything that would go against what God would have for you, this man did just to save, you know, to keep from going into great length and detail. He says that he wasted it with righteous living. Now, here's the thing that we have to do if you want to see, and what I'm trying to articulate to you today, and I hope I do a good job of it is, is that if you want to see a loved one return back to you, if you want to know how to handle somebody that's in rebellion against you in your house, if you want to know how to, to, to see them come back to God, it is very important that you understand these processes, these steps, because these are the things that are going to take place. Okay, they're going to get away from you. They're going to try to get as far as they can. They're going to waste everything that they have, and they're going to come to a place to where they're homeless. They're going to come to a place to where they're tired. They're going to come to a place to where they're dirty. Yeah. They're going to come to a place where they don't have a car. Come on. They're going to come to a place to where they don't have a... They're, they're going to come to a place to where they, they themselves were the ones who were in control. Mm -hmm. And now they've lost all control that they have. And they no longer now have it. And so they've come to a place to where they've wasted every resource and every opportunity that they have. And now they're without everything that they need and that they had before. This is where it's very important that you understand, do not help them. Yeah. And that's going to be one of the hardest things you're ever going to do in your life. Because that means your baby girl is going to come to you and you're going to see her skinny on meth. That means your baby boy is going to come to you strung out. That means they're going to come to you with no place to stay, dirty. That means they're going to come broken and destitute. And if you help them right now, if you put, if, if you step in right now, you will just have defeated everything that God was setting up for them in their life to bring them back to you. And I'll show you why. It says right here. It says, and when he had, and when he had, you know, he wasted all of his stuff, went into a far country, and when he had spent there, uh, and he wasted all his substance with righteous living, and when he had spent all. He didn't have anything else. Yeah. Nobody giving nothing else. Do not keep enabling people to continue to live in a sinful lifestyle. Yeah. Do not continue to allow people to continue to be strung out on dope. I can't tell you how many times my mama should have not gave me $5. Yeah. My mama thought she was doing me a favor because she'd only given me $5. I'd take that $5 and I'd you understand. Do not help them. Do not help them. You don't help them. The very person that knows the wrong that they're doing and the rebellion that they're living and the deception they're under, they cannot receive help from you because it sends mixed signals to them. Yeah. And it allows them to continue to keep living the lifestyle that they're living. And I'll show you. It says right here, and when he had, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. As soon as he had spent all of his resources, as soon as he had spent all that he had, God had it, perfect timing, that as soon as he was out of money, as soon as he was out of everything he had to spend, there was a famine that came in the land. There was no way to access anything. It's our responsibility to make sure we don't, when God's given them a famine, we need to make sure they get one. Yeah. That's one of the toughest things that you'll ever have to do. It's, and, it's, and don't, God showed me like this. The storm that he's prepared for somebody in their life, quit bailing them out of it. Because it's the very thing that he's using to bring them back to him. Amen. Now, I want to show you this. And when he had joined himself to a citizen of that country, this one puzzled me for a while because I was curious of what it meant. Why did he therefore join himself to a citizen of that country? 
and then this speaks to why you don't help them. He joined himself. He, he, you see that he got his inheritance from something he shouldn't have because his father wasn't even dead. You've seen that he left and got as far away from his father and his family as he could. You've seen that he spent all his money on riotous living. You've seen that a famine came in the land and he's still not ready to give up. Yeah. The reason he joined himself to a citizen of that country is because he still wanted to pursue that that was in him. Amen. He wasn't done yet. Amen. He wasn't done yet. So now if you step in again, and if you keep con continually stepping in in people's lives, and if you continue to keep trying to do something that you're not capable of doing, because if I think we would all agree that there's one thing, if, if one thing we learn, that you can't make somebody do something they don't want to do, and you can't make somebody want it bad, you can't want it bad enough for them that that makes them want it. Yeah. Amen. You, yourself, I got clean, I got sober, I became a good father, I got born again, I became the man I am today, yes, because of Christ, but it was because that's what I wanted to do more than the alcohol, more than the drugs, more than the fornication, more than, that's what I Amen. wanted to do. Praise God. That's what I wanted to do. It was not, it was not, somebody else didn't want it for me. Something ended up happening inside of me that said no. I do not want this for my life. Now, you see that he joined himself to a citizen of that country. That means things is going to get worse for people than better. Yeah. That means you're going to see things with people that you love. Relationships, children, mothers, fathers, you name it. You're going to see it get worse. <laughs> this, is, this is good news. This would be bad news. If it got worse, then that was it. Yeah. But it doesn't stop yeah. at just the bad. It says, Man, and good. he set him, he set, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. So what it'll show you is, is that some people, some people are willing. Uh, no, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it how I want to say it. Some people are willing to sell themselves to pay their rent to continue to keep living in the lifestyle that they want to live. Some people are, are willing to do those low down and dirty things like feed the swine and eat with the swine to continue to live in the sin that they want to that they want to live in. Because some people don't want to say I'm wrong. Some people don't want to say that this didn't work out. Some people's pride's got to take them all the way down to the fact that they got to have a come to Jesus moment. That Lord Jesus, girl, tell me you know you're worth more than selling yourself for your rent. Yeah. Tell Amen. me that you know that you're worth selling yourself more than paying the light bill. Tell me that you're more, that you're not going to continue to degrade yourself mentally and physically and continue to give yourself away to people who have no value for you. And you're going to continue to give yourself away and parts of yourself away that you are not going to ever get back. Yeah. Tell me that you're going to get to the place. And so it is hard to see that take place. It is hard to see that happen. But if you want to see them return to Christ, you'd better allow them to go through it. Yeah. And I'm telling you something that's not easy to do. I'm telling you something that'll keep you up at night. I'm telling you something that'll make you lose weight. I'm telling you something that'll keep you from eating. I'm telling you something that will that that is not a blessing to go through. Yeah. It is painful. It is not fun. But what I will tell you is, is that it don't stop there. Mm. And so he joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent unto his field to feed swine. Continue to let them be. Yeah. And he would have fain filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Sometimes people need to get used up and realize that that's exactly what they are. Come on. Getting used up. Tell you the need truth. To be able, you need to be able to let people go through that and see that that is not what is good for them. It says, in 17 it says and when he had came to himself he said how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to, to, and enough to spare 
and I perish with hunger. Let me stop here again and say, if you can make it this far, make no mistake, you will probably have made mistakes by this far in the process. Mm. Yeah. You will have probably gave the $5. You will have probably tried to help. You will have probably tried to do something and you will still see that you're not successful. If you make it this far to where the person has came to the knowledge and the understanding that what they've been doing is wrong, do not be fooled yet. It is not enough to acknowledge that you've done wrong. How many times have you been told sorry and you tell them that sorry don't cut? Yeah. How many of you know I had, uh, well, a better, so I have had instances where people have told me something and their actions speak louder than what they say. Yeah. And so Paul says it, that I don't want to just hear your word, I want to see the deed. Amen. Don't tell me you love me and then do everything that yeah. someone that would not love me do to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when you get to this point and when you're so hopeful because you've done seen them waste all their inheritance, you've done seen them de de degrade themselves mentally and, and physically, when you've seen them attach themselves to people that are no good for them but they attach themselves to them because they continue to allow them to go the way they want to continue going yeah. then when they come to the place where they have been and this looks like rape this looks like abuse yeah this doesn't look like some pg film this looks like real hell happening in real people's lives and so if you get to this place to where they have come and they have came to themselves and they realize that they were better off doing it God's way. Do not, do not jump for joy just yet. Continue to stay the course and keep your distance because even though they realize that they've done wrong, even though they realize that they had it better off, it is not only enough to continue to, it is not only enough to admit that you're a sinner, it is, not only, it is not only enough to come to the fact that you've done wrong. Number 18, it says, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called the son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. This is him realizing what he's done. Yeah. Here's the point that you need to see. Here's what you need to see. In verse 20, and he arose and came to his father. Now, this is the point where he's made the decision to come back to. He's not only admitted that he's got the problem, but now he's willing to put in the work. It's not good enough to just admit that you're an alcoholic. You got to put in the work to get some. It's not good enough to it's not good enough to just say I know this that or the other. It's it's not good enough to say I'm not going to have an affair anymore or I'm not going to sleep with somebody else anymore. What you have to do is is you have to not do it anymore. Amen. You can't just say you have to have that that season of okay, that's what you said. Now let's do what? Put your money where your mouth is. Amen. Let's make sure that you're going to do what you're going to say. And it's your job Listen to me closely. It is your job to make sure you protect yourself not to get caught, tripped up, or deceived in what they're saying. You stay at a distance and make sure that they are actually walking out and living exactly what it is that they are saying they know they're wrong. That's right. Now, he says, uh, now this is our responsibility because I feel like that this is where a lot of people go wrong. Because there's a lot of people that'll get to the point where they realize they gotta let somebody go live out whatever it is they're called to live out. And so I believe that I believe that whether you want to let somebody go or not, I believe you'll be forced to, even if you don't want to. Because a person will <coughs> go their own way whether you want them to or not. Okay? So up till now, all I've showed you is is do not get disheartened in that process because I've tried to show you what's going on. I've tried to show you what's taking place, okay? 
I believe whether you want to go with that program or not, I believe that you'll get there anyway. I believe that if you don't understand what's going on, I believe that you can lengthen the time that somebody's out in the world. Yeah. And so if you understand what's going on, I believe that you can uh, shorten the gap, shorten the time of the rebellion or of the you know wrongdoing. Now, here's what you need to be doing in the process. So when he arose, so when this boy finally came to his senses and come to himself and came back to his father, I want you to pay close attention. It says, but when he was a great way off, his father saw him. In order for his father to see him, his father had to be prepared he was coming back. Amen. The father couldn't have seen him a great way off if he wasn't looking. So in other words, you can't give up on somebody and that's your reason for letting them go. You can't allow what they've done or not done to continue to offend you and fester in you until the point to where the reason you've let them go and you've been okay with letting them go is because you've accepted that they're worse of a person than you and that you've just hardened your heart to them and now when they come back, you ain't even looking for them. Yeah. Because you wasn't even believing they was coming back because yeah. you had given up on them. And so now your heart ain't right. Now you can't receive. It says, uh, that he was a great way off and his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. There needs to be a time where they come back to you and let you know that they've done you wrong. In the sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Now, this is something that it is important to know. When the son came back, when the son came back, the father was waiting on him. The father was prepared for him to come back. Then when the son came back, the father had what? He had a ring to put on his hand. He had a robe to put on him. He had a fatty calf to kill. Are you preparing for the return of the very person that you've had to turn over to God? Are, are you preparing your heart? Are you guarding your heart? Are you keeping yourself? Are you keeping yourself with the compassion that it takes and the love in your heart? See, the whole reason you got to guard your heart against what's going on in this first part is because if you continue to allow yourself to see and go through the things that those people are doing, how many of you know it's harder to get something out of your head once you've seen it? Yeah. Okay. So if you sit there and watch all the evil that's being done in someone's life that it's harder for you to unsee that. It's harder for you to unsee that. It's harder for your children to unsee that. And so you have to guard your heart from the very person that you love. You have to guard your heart so that you can continue to remain and have love for that person because you can't allow them to keep doing you wrong because they keep doing you wrong and it keeps hardening your heart because you're having more and more stuff that you've got to unsee out of your head. Yeah. So you have to protect yourself from the very person that you love and that you want to return to you by distancing yourself from them. We're told that that's not love. That is love. Because I am guarding my heart so that that way, when God finishes his work that he is doing in your life, that when you come back, when, when that person comes back, I'm the man that is able to receive that now they come back and now I don't have room for them. I've, I've, I've done moved on. I've done started something else. I've done got into something else. And, and now I'm not even looking for them to come back. I'm not even, that's not even a realm of possibility in my mind. And so what this father did, this father did not try to keep his son from going off. This father did not try to keep his son from living the way he wanted to live. This father didn't bail him out of trouble every time he got into trouble. This father was very clear that this is God's job. Amen. But what did the father do? The father kept working. The father kept looking. It's my opinion that every day, how many times you ever had somebody leave you in your life and at a certain time during the day, they was on your mind? To, for me, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Every 2 o'clock, every day at 2 o'clock in the morning, now my mind, what am I doing at 2 o'clock in the morning? I'm looking. I'm looking. So this guy, every day, at some time, he's looking. In whatever direction he's looking in. What is he looking for? He's looking for his son to return. Yeah. He hadn't seen him. He hadn't helped him. He don't know he's been, 
eating with the swine. He don't know what he's been doing. All the father knows is, is that when he comes back, I'm going to have a ring for him. Yeah. I'm going to have a robe for him. Amen. I'm going to have a fatted calf to kill for him. Yeah, I believe him greater. He knows that I've got to keep my heart right so that when he comes back to Christ and then Christ returns him back to me, I'm able to receive him. Amen. I'm able to receive him. Instead of just, it is what it is, and and it's just it's accepted, uh, you know, this, that, and the other. No, 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 no. I'm unwilling to accept it. The Bible says I got my family to a thousand generations. That's right. Either believe it or not. And so, it's when he told him to bring him the fatted calf, he said, uh, and bring here the fatted calf to kill it and let us eat and be merry. Verse 24. For this is my son, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now, I'll say this real quick. God going to ask you a question. If you pay attention, God's going to ask you a question. He's going to ask you, can somebody do something to you that you wouldn't forgive them for? He's going to ask you that question. Because if you haven't been done wrong yet, just keep living. It'll happen. Somebody's going to, to leave you with something to clean up that wasn't your mess and you didn't make it. Somebody's going to do it. Somebody's going to do you wrong and it wasn't your fault and it's what they done and you are now stuck with cleaning up a mess somebody else made. And you're going to know it. And you're going to create bullet points of every reason why I should never fool with that person again in my life. Because they did me wrong. What God's going to ask you is, is he's going to ask you in the way of eternity, are they worth it? You know, somebody asked me not too long ago, how do you know what kind of woman to marry? And I sat there thinking to myself, you know, and I've heard all these stories for a long period of time. And you want to know, you want to know how to know if it's a woman or even a man uh, that you should marry. You know how you can tell? Do you love the Lord? Amen. Not do they. Yeah, that's good to find out. That's important. But do you love the Lord? Do you have a relationship with God? Do you hear God? And then second off, are you willing to fight for him? Because yeah. make no mistake, any person that you get with on the face of the earth, if you do not think that you are going to have to fight for that person, you have lost your mind. Because I'm going to tell you right now, somebody's in her inbox. Somebody's in her DMs. Somebody's saying that if you was with me, I'd do you better. There's songs on the radio that say the same thing. There's songs on the... Everywhere you turn and you look, there's some guy out there saying that if you were with me rather than the man that you were with, that it would be better for you. The grass is greener over here. Come on over here. There is someone always trying to split up the family. Amen. You've never seen an attack on anything else like you've seen on a husband and a wife and, and husband and a wife and kids. You've never seen more destruction. You've never seen more chaos. You've never seen more tragedy than within a family. You've never seen it. You've never had to experience that kind of pain at work. You've never experienced that kind of pain any other places except for with your most intimate relationships between you and your other half and in your children. Never. So, so what about that you need to know? You need to know that the woman that God has gifted you with is a gift from God and you better love her like you're never going to get another chance to. And you'd better make sure that she knows and I'm just speaking from a man's point of view. It applies to a, a lady as well for her husband. But I just speak it from a man's point of view because that's the one I know. You'd better make sure that you treat her like a gift of God, not that she's property. Because if you ever think that you got ownership, you've lost your mind. You don't have ownership. She'll show you real quick. <laughs> she'll show you real quick because she'll show you she ain't yours because she'll go off somewhere else. So what you better do, what you better realize is, is that you better realize that she's a gift from God. And you better treat her like you ain't never going to get to another day in your life. Because there will come a day, whether she passes away or whether whatever takes place, and you regret every moment that you didn't take an opportunity to love her and to show her that you loved her like God loved you. It takes some of us a long time, and I will say this, ladies. It takes men a long time to figure that out. Yeah. 
It takes a long time for men to figure that out. As men, men do not do a good enough job of walking alongside young men and teaching them how to talk with women, teaching them how to treat ladies. And so usually we only learn it after we've done made a horrible mess of things. And then, and then by the time we figure it out, you know what y'all are? Yeah. Tired of dealing with us. Right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, and that's, and that's, you know, sorry. That's, that's all I want to say about that. <laughs> but God. here's, that's how the father responded. And that's how the father took his time. Now, the, they had an older son, an older brother. So now the elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house and he heard the music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what are these things meant. The servant said unto him, Thy brother has come, and thy father killed the calf, gave him the ring, gave him the robe, so on and so forth. Now look at what the old brother did. And, the, and he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came out his father and entreated him, Listen, 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 listen. I'm living my life right. I hadn't always lived my life right. I'm living my life right now, today. Okay? I surrendered myself to Jesus Christ. I have not always been a good man. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, I can tell you things about my life that I can show you. I, I am very aware that I have not always been a good man. Let me explain something to you. If God is going to be good to me, I better not be mad at Him for being good to you. Amen. And so when, when, somebody, when somebody that has been out there living like all this, that, and the other, and somebody finally came to themselves and came back to Christ, and you see them be restored, it's very important that you haven't hardened your heart so much that you don't think they deserve it. Mm. Because what you'll forget is, is you'll forget that you needed that same forgiveness as well. Yeah. And so when the time comes, you need to rejoice that somebody has finally quit living like the devil and came Praise back to God. God. Praise God. And so don't ever get caught up in the fact that I've been the one doing this. I've been the one holding the fort down. Where was he? out there doing all this, that, and the other, and I was here taking care of these kids. What is this? And then now he wants to come back and enjoy the fruits of his labor. Hold on. Without the grace of God, you wouldn't have had the strength or the ability to take care of them anyway. Amen. Amen. And so don't be mad at the blessing of God that protected you from the, the foolishness living. And because they had to go through it and experience it, and now that they had to go through it and experience it, because you sat over here and you've been mad this whole time, you've been having to do it by yourself, but you were looking at it wrong because by the grace of God, you didn't have to go through it. Amen. You had your babies. You're taking care of yourself. And now you're mad. Why? Because now they finally come back to Christ, and Christ is restoring back to them the things in which they lost. Yeah. My God, you better not get mad about it because there's going to come a time and a day in your life when you're going to need it. Yeah. And so we can't be upset with people and can't get ourselves to the point that well, I've been doing all the right things. They've been doing all the wrong things. And look at them. They're prospering. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Glory to God. Because that means if they can prosper and they've been doing all this hell and now I ain't been doing all that hell, maybe I just need to change my way of thinking and maybe I can just look around and see I'm blessed. Amen. You know, and so it says, don't get caught up with the old brother. Look what his father told him. He said, and he was angry and would not go in. Therefore he came out and his father entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. And so he's jealous of what God, in other words, because this man, this prodigal son's father, is a, is a representation of what God does for us. Amen. And so he, he gets jealous of what God's doing for him. But as soon as thy son was come, thou hast devoured thy living with harlots. And this is the brother reminding the father of what all he did. Look, we already have Satan we got to deal with. Yeah. We already have evil in this world we got to deal with. We don't need to be accusing our brothers and sisters and our loved ones of the very thing. Satan's doing a good enough job of that as it is. Yeah. Yeah. Can somebody talk about a good time? Mm -hmm. kills, Can somebody kills, be thankful sure. of something that they did do? Right? You know, like I always say when it comes to relationships, if I can't be thankful for anything else, I can be thankful that the fact without them, I wouldn't have them. Amen. Yeah. And so I can find one good thing in the midst of all of it to be thankful for them about. 
And if I can't go no further than that, then glory to God, at least I found one thing to be thankful for instead of contemplating on 20 things that I shouldn't. Amen. And so he says, But as soon as thy son was come, they devoured thy living, and hast killed for him the fatted calf. And the father said, and he said unto him, Son, thou art with me, and all that I have is thine. See, what you don't realize is, is the whole time, the, how you let that person go is so important. Because how you let them go, how you leave a situation is how you enter into the next one. Always remember that. So how this brother let the brother go is he let him go, but he made all those bullet points of why that was a sorry son of a gun and why I'm so much better than he is. And this is why I should get all these things that my father has because I am better than he is and this is why he doesn't ever deserve it. And so that's how he continued to walk on his daily life. And so from the time his brother left, the other brother sitting around the whole time with his head up high, with pride in his heart, glad about the fact that I gotta be daddy's favorite now because look what the other brother did. The whole time never understanding that the father's heart never wants to see one of his children go. And last time I checked, last time I checked, we were supposed to have Christ likeness in us. Amen. And so why would we be glorying or happy in someone else's demise? It does nothing, you know, it's like that's poison, that's making poison for somebody else to drink yeah. and you the person that drank it. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this is thy brother that was dead and is alive again and was lost and is now found. You're going you're gonna to have to get your eyes off of them. And you're going to just have to get to the point where you understand it is not something you can do. But if you want to see a loved one, whether it's a family member or a husband, a wife, or children, or whatever, if you want to see them return back unto you, you've got to continue to stay out of the way and let God bring them to the place that they need to be brought to. Them. And however that is. And if God is protecting you because he's removed them from you, then quit trying to put yourself back in the situation because he's protecting you from seeing things that you can't never unsee. But that does not mean that you harden yourself. Let me explain something to you that I'm learning now. You move on with life. You be careful what you move on to do. So you don't jump from one thing to the next. You continue in the process that you're doing. So in other words, whoever it is that is gone and that you want to see return, continue to be doing the things that when they come back, believe that they will, and then continue to do those things that when they come back, that you're able to receive them back to you with. Amen. That's all I have. Praise God. Praise God. Brother Jonathan, thank you so much. Absolutely. Man, I was reminded of Isaiah 53, 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have gone everyone to their own way, and the Lord has laid upon him, not us, him, the iniquities of us all. So no matter where we're at, no matter what we're going through, no matter what we come from, no matter what our current situation is, we can manifest him, or we can manifest the devil. We get to choose, it's free will. We get to choose what we manifest. I choose Christ's likeness, I choose Christ. To do that, you have to die in Christ. Just like Christ died for us, we have to die in Him to be re reborn again in kingdom. Amen? Praise God. What a great message today. I just speak just great blessing over all the heads of our saints here at Living Water Ministries. I just pray for you just to rest and receive in that word today of truth that we receive because Jesus is the truth agent. He's always on time. He's always working on our behalf. And even whenever we can't see it, that's what faith does. Faith makes the invisible visible. Sometimes we've got to get past ourselves for a hot minute and allow the blinders to be lifted to recognize the truth. Faith cometh by hearing and by seeing. I hope you heard the gospel truth today that came out of my brother as a vessel for kingdom. 
rest in receiving that. Uh, these scriptures will be posted along with the video uh, this week on Living Water Ministries, FLF.com. Uh, if anything that you're hearing right now is blessing you on our live channel on YouTube, please go to Living Water Ministries, FLF.com. We've got a host of resources for you there. Uh, we're on YouTube, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, as well as Twitter. Uh, any questions that you have, please go to the website, hit the Contact Us button. If you feel led to give to our ministry and support our ministry right now, uh, we're doing big things. We're doing big things right in our own backyard. Okay, again, go to Living Water Ministries, FLF.com, hit the Donate Now button, join us. we also on Venmo as well as Zelle and PayPal, Living Water Ministries, FLF. Uh, before we leave, I just want to just bless the heads here. And, and, and just continue to pour into you with the amazing word that was spoken through Brother Jonathan, one of our directors here at Living Water Ministries. We just want to give him a special thanks for coming all the way from East Texas, from Marshall, Texas, to be with us. We just have such a sweet time together. Every time he comes out, it just really refreshes me in the spirit, recharges me in regards to you know being a traveling minister, being an evangelist, and just being a son of God. That's what we're called to do anyways called to pour into each other. We're called to edify, exhort, and care for one another as brothers and sisters in the Lord. If we're not doing that, why are we here? I think that was a message that resonated with me today as well. If we're not doing these things, why are we here? What are we doing? We are living a non-existent life. We're living a life that Galatians 6, 3 says, do not be, do not be deceived by man in a fallen world. Don't be deceived by the great deceiver. Don't be deceived by the prince of this world. Okay? Achieve nothing here. Receive everything from your daddy, your spiritual father, that's already given you everything. Amen? Amen. God, we just come before you with humble hearts, with open minds, open hearts. And Lord, we just receive you. We receive all of you. We receive your message today. Let it resonate with us. Let it grow as we dig deeper in you this week. Father God, continue to challenge us in our walk so that we can be more as vessels for your kingdom. Lord, we know that time is approaching. We know that we're in the third season of revival. We know that you're calling your people home. And Lord, we just want to glorify and honor you. Father God, give us all that we need. Hear our prayers. Father God, hear our cries. Father God, remove the pain, the anguish, the depression, the anxiety, the things that aren't of you, by you, for you, or through you, and replace it with Jesus' joy, Jesus' peace, Jesus' love. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Any sweet testimonials that happened to you this week? Would anybody like to share any sweet testimonials that happened to you this week in kingdom? Any praise reports? Any praise reports at all? What, what do we got our squad up to this week? 225, 230? All right, we got a praise report. We went up, what, 10, 15 pounds in the weight room this past week. I love it. Any other praise reports this week? I want to just say one thing. Brother Jonathan, never, please come on up. Please come on up. Ne never, never let anybody make you feel ashamed, stupid, or foolish. For fighting for your family. Amen. Ever. Because church, ministry, job, with, with, without the family, you don't got nothing. You don't got it. And so if 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 you just won't accept the fact that it ain't over till God says it's over. And if you'll just stop, when you get into a situation where it just looks like I ain't no telling when you're just overwhelmed, if you'll just stop and quit seeking everything else, I'm talking about shut everything else down, yeah. and just get into a relationship with God and find out what He would have you do. But I'm going to tell you something. I don't care how big a fool you make of yourself fighting for your family, it's worth it. Amen. Every time. Amen. It, every time. Because that carries on into your children 
into your children's children. And the one thing that we have to stop right now is we have to stop this lie that you can have casual sex with somebody else and it don't matter. Amen. Every time you think you're using them, they using you. And both of you is tricked and conceived that you're giving away part of yourself you'll never get back. Amen. And something happens mentally that takes you to a place that degrades your worth. And you keep allowing worse and worse things that you accept, that you create a new normal every time. I don't know what it is. I don't know how to make it stop. But I know I can choose to not do it. And I can encourage other people not to do it. My, my, my granddaddy told me like this here. He said, son, you can change your face, but you can't change your problems. And so anybody that's ever gone through a bad relationship, moved on to somebody else, that somebody else you moved on to, now you got problems with them too. And all you've done, you've changed the face and you maybe got some new problems, but you still got problems. There's a lot to be said about just sitting quiet, being still, and try to get this thing straight before we continue to keep putting things one on top of the other and make this stuff so hard that we got so much crap in our head that we can't sort through it, we can't deal nothing with it, and we get overwhelmed, and now we suppress it with alcohol. Now we suppress it with meth. Now we suppress it with, with sexual relationships because while we're in the midst of having sex, we forget about it. But as soon as it's over, the torment starts all over again. And it just continues to torment you. And then the next thing you know, you're just an alcoholic. You're a nymphomaniac. And, 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 and you continue to keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it, but then the more you do it and do it and do it and do it, there's still time in between. And that torment gets worse and worse and worse. The only way to make it stop is quit. And deal with what's in front of you that scares you to death. Look at the very thing that scares you to death and deal with it and quit trying to sweep it under the rug just to trip on it later. That's the Man, powerful. Thank you, brother. Yeah, we're not called to live in fear. We're called to have a healthy fear of the Lord, but we're not called to live in fear. It's not in our DNA as believers. And I think uh, my brother just hit the nail right on the head. We're the ones that continue to put ourselves back in the same pit. It's not him. It's not him. He's a zealous, loving God. He's not vengeful. It's us. It's our stuff. It's our flesh. The world is flesh. If we continue to, you know, believe Galatians six three and be deceived by man in a fallen world, live a higher hand mentality, and not follow the good shepherd, we're always going to put ourselves in the pit. The question is, what are we going to do to get ourselves out? Amen. Amen. And that's just to keep our identity centered in cross. What was already paid for two thousand years ago, because it's perfect. The blood spilled on that cross was perfect for you and me, and we all stand equal shoulder. We all stand righteous at the foot of the cross because of what he sacrificed. So all we're called to do is just surrender. Just to surrender to his will. Will nothing. It's all his will anyways. Achieve nothing. Receive everything. Amen? Amen. Amen. Any more praise reports for this week? Tell me something positive that happened this week in your life. And kingdom. I got to uh, have an amazing time at Lowe's Grocery Store in Alvoy, Texas with my sweet sister and her husband. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure the good book says in Matthew where two or three or more gather in his name, he is there. Uh, tell you what, aisle three at Lowe's Grocery Store was shining, wasn't it? Yes, it was. There was some sweet time in Jesus, right? You know, that's what we're called to do. You know, if we're not doing that again, why are we here? You know, there's so much more that comes on us in the afterglow of Holy Spirit, an afterglow of what Jesus paid for, an afterglow of our heavenly promises whenever we choose to get activated. Amen. I told you last week, what's the coolest thing you could ever be? That's it. Jesus lover, right? A Christian. That's the coolest thing you could ever be. What a great opportunity to be a lamppost in the big city on the hill for all of your brothers and sisters over at Alboy Middle School, right? Amen? We all have our own ministries wherever you are. It's wherever you are. 
okay? We talked about that last week. What we're doing right now, conceptually, doesn't make sense. Because the church says that, well, that's not technically church. Well, guess what? The church is the body. It's not Amen. the building. We need to tear the roof off, and knock the four walls down, and be the body. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, thank you all so much for the praise reports this week. Thank you all for being here. Again, tune in with us, Living Water Ministries, FLF.com. If you need prayer, please reach out to us at our website on the Contact Us button, and we would love to be praying for you. Again, all of our contact information is on the website if you need to set up one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, also, any prayer requests for this week? Any prayer requests at all? Dad's still hanging on. One more time? Dad's still hanging in there. Praise God. I, 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 got, I got another praise report. You mind me sharing this? So we had a gentleman that we got to pray for two weeks ago at our social, okay, that was already in hospice, hooked up to life support. We prayed a very simple prayer. Father God, if you're calling him home, let it be a praise parade. The moment you were Let it be a praise parade. If you're calling him to still be here, make it very certain in the soon here and now that he is your saint and that he is in divine protection. They unplugged. His breathing machine, hospice had already come to visit. He's still, he's still a vessel for the gospel in his hospital room. I guarantee you that doctors, nurses, techs, everybody that comes in that room is getting touched by the Holy Spirit that got activated in that room whenever we prayed for him. We can intercede for one another in all things. It's amazing what happens whenever we intercede and we be the body for one another. We edify, we exhort, we care. That's what we're called to do. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray it out. Father God, I just pray a just blessing over all the heads of our saints and also those that aren't here today. Lord, we just we ask for all these chairs to be filled in your name, Father God. We ask for a great abundance that we need to go get more chairs. Amen. We know that you already provisioned the vision. We have storehouses in heaven according to Revelation that you continue to pour into our cup as we get depleted. We're going to be a drink offering in you. We're going to run the race in you, Father God. We're going to continue to seek you till we see you because we know that our faith, rooted in love, gives us hope that springs eternal and that we can operate spirit up and not soul down. We can be a mighty spiritual Levite and just apply reigning training in everything that we do, Father God, for you, by you, through you. Lord, I, I lift up the, the prayers today. I also lift up the unanswered prayers. Father God, I, I lift up the head right now in this group that is battling, that is battling. And Lord, I just ask for you just to wrap them up in your big old arms and love on them just like their children in your throne room, laughing and praying, just receiving from you. Let them know that you love them with a perfect agape love that's immeasurable. Father God, I rebuke addiction in all shapes and sizes and all forms. I rebuke anything of the enemy, slings and arrows that tries to deter our saints from seeking you. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that has no dominion over any of us. We break the chains. We bind the bad and we loose the good, Father God. We speak death to anything that is not of you, not for you, not by you, not through you, not kingdom. And we cast it out in the deep, dark depths of the sea just like the mulberry tree because it has no power or authority over us. In fact, your good book says anything that is evil and not of you has no power and authority over us anyways, and we laugh at it. <laughs> we laugh at it because we have total power and authority by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We have the same mind, same character, same spiritual power and authority, same gifts as Christ as when he walked this earth. When he walked the walk and talked the talk, and we can channel it right here in the here and now because it is the third season of revival. You are calling your people home, and until that point, we'll do the last two things that you gave us. To be the first fruits, as we talked about last week, and also be vessels for the gospel in all things. Lord, I bless the body. I speak great anointing over the body. I pray for answered prayers. I pray for desires of hearts to be not only recognized but received. And Lord, we just continue to give you all praise and glory. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Ooh, that's powerful today, y'all.
That was powerful.